Well, amen, amen. Good morning, everyone. If you're here for the very first time, I'm Ricky Ayala, the senior pastor, and I welcome all of you, those of you who are here on, in the sanctuary, and for those who are watching online. May God bless you. Uh, we are in our current sermon series that is titled, At the Movies. And what we do, if you're here for the first time, just give you a, a brief description. Uh, we are going to, this is the first time we're doing it, and uh, we are doing it during the month of July. And so what happens is, every Sunday, we take a movie, uh, at least two clips, or one, or maybe more clips, of the movie, and we bring into the biblical perspectives of those uh, messages that we see on the screens. And so therefore, uh, the, the first Sunday on July, July 3rd, yes, July 3rd was, we talked about staying in the pocket, is to make sure that you have people uh, that are surrounding you to lift you up and to, and to not bring you down just because that you, you fail at something. But all of a sudden, when you do fail at something, you can go somebody or others that is going to lift you up and say, okay, you, you can still do this. Yes, you messed up, but this is the way that you can correct it. Uh, and that was the movie, The American Underdog. And then last week, I talked about the different gifts that the Spirit provides everyone uh, that connects to the body of Christ. And even when you feel that your gift is not big enough or so important, it doesn't mean that you don't belong to the body of Christ. And we talked and we looked at some clips from the movie uh, Encanto. This week, I'm going to be talking about mentorship, and more about uh, mentoring as more of a teacher, but also the responsibility that comes from the student. And I'm going to be utilizing two clips from the movie Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. It is uh, not your regular uh, uh, action movie that you've see, probably seen when you talk about Spider-Man, but this is an animated one. But before I go into today's uh, first clip, I want to share with you regarding mentorship. And sometimes, you know, if you look at your life right now, you can probably think about individuals throughout your life that came alongside of you to help you to grow to where you are right now. Whether it's growing in the knowledge of, uh, of work or what to do and making decisions, you can probably think about individuals that came along your way. But here's the part. As a mentor, uh, you, uh, I'm, there's several things that you can think about when you're looking at an individual as a protege, as someone that you can help. Because, uh, uh, But there's, there's several things, but I want to share at least four things. The first one is, as a mentor, you look at the potential that the individual has. Uh, and, and, and sometimes when the individual don't even know that they have the potential, but you've, you, you, you've seen it in them, it's like, oh man, they're a little green right now, but man, if I come alongside of them, if they will allow me to come alongside of them to bring them from where they are and to where they need to be, I know that they can grow under my tutelage. And, and so as my protege or, or, or as a student, I can get them from where they are to where they, need, they can be but there's a growth process. So the mentor sees a potential. The other one is that it, the, the mentor challenges those who are under that like, as a student because you cannot grow unless you go through challenges. And sometimes you people want to grow, and, but it make it easy for their life, right? But there are times that when we go through things that we actually come out stronger after we've gone through those moments of hardships or trials or tribulations or, or moments of, of, uh, uh, of uncertainty. There's a, a scripture passage in Psalm 23, verse 4, where it says, uh, uh, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. And what happens is when you're going through the valley, okay, when you come out, the hope is that you are stronger than when you first started. And so the mentor actually uh, goes alongside it and sometimes challenges the student so that way they can grow. And the other part, a part of that is, is the, the empowerment that the, member, uh, that the mentor gives to the student. It's to make sure that they equip them and that they empower them to do what they need to do, whether it's the challenges or whether it's just something, hey, can you make sure you do this or, or that, whatever you may give them. Because then it allows for the individual to grow and learn. Even if they fail at it, if they're attempting something that they probably, they've never tried before. And the fourth part is making sure that it is consistently uh, communicating with them the words of encouragement. 
Because like anybody and like any one of us, if we have ever tried something new, if other people have really pushed us in a positive way, they, they know that they can uh, see us grow. If they push us and then we get discouraged or, or we, we, we get disappointed or something, it, it's more of consistently, you're doing good. Don't worry about that. Yes, you're going to learn from it, but, but don't stop there. Keep on going. That's what a mentor does. So they see the potential. It provides the challenges. Uh, it provides the empowerment or the equipping of it, as well as consistently provides words of encouragement. And it's so important. So I know there's many other things that a mentor can do, but those are the four things. So I want to let you know that, first of all, is that those four things don't have to be in this, that specific order, but they, tend, they can happen. So the very first clip I want to share with you is uh, the Spider-Man. And by the way, anytime I think I talk about Spider-Man, it's the, uh, the adult. It's the animated one, but it's the adult Spider-Man. And I'll call the young one, the, the, his protege, Spidey, okay? So Spider-Man and Spidey, when uh, moving forward into this sermon, that's why I'll address them. But before we go into the clip, I do want to let you know, if you're watching online, due to copyright laws, we cannot show the clips uh, live stream. It can only be shown in the sanctuary. So if you're going to miss out uh, next week, you got to come here to watch the, the other clips that are for the other movie. But hold on there. There's nothing wrong with your device. We'll be right back. <laughs> In that clip, when you see Spider-Man, he's there in the midst of the situation. He is actually trying to teach Spidey of what to do and remain calm and not make so much noise. And so he asked the question, you know, what do you do to relax? And so all of a sudden, it got him thinking, and then that's what he did. He started singing or humming, and, and of course, he made a little bit more ruckus on there. But uh, the Spider-Man actually didn't realize what caused uh, the uh, uh, Spidey to relax until he heard it. And what did he say? Oh, for crying out loud. So what I'm saying is sometimes mentorship is not an easy thing. All right? It, it, it creates sometimes you have to deal with patience. You have to deal with making sure that it doesn't take you off course, but you have to find a different way to help the student to grow out of it. And of course, when he says, you know, he, he started thinking about what do, I re- what do I do to relax? And he started singing. What does a mentor do? And that creates that, in the, the, that moment where in our lives, if we've become a mentor, hopefully that helps you out that don't give up on the individual. Try to find different ways to get them to where they need to be from where they are. And so in, the, in our scriptures, in our Bible, there are different ways, uh, different examples, if I may say it that way, that, uh, of mentorship. I think about, for example, Jethro uh, and Moses, or, and then Moses and Joshua. How about uh, Naomi and Ruth? Uh, Or maybe uh, Jesus and his disciples. You're talking about uh, a mentorship there. But today I want to come into the scriptures relating to the mentorship and relationship that they had between the Apostle Paul and Timothy. Now, while Paul, the Apostle Paul, was on his missionary journey in East Asia, he met a young believer named Timothy who so impressed him that he asked the young man to join him in ministry. Timothy must have equally been impressed by his new mentor because he not only left his home and family, but the Bible also says that he even agreed to be circumcised. I won't go into the scriptures, but if you you like taking notes, that's found in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 1 through 3. Now, as a mentor, remember those four things I mentioned earlier? Well, Paul clearly recognized the potential that Timothy could uh, attain through the Apostle Paul's guidance. Paul also challenged Timothy's uh, ministry skills by sending him out to the churches that he had uh, uh, gone to. And at one point, he actually gave uh, uh, Timothy one of his uh, uh, churches, which was over in Ephesus, a congregation that had fallen ill to uh, false teachings and heresies. In addition to carefully selecting Timothy and equipping him for ministry, Paul mentored Timothy through the empowerment, which was the third one I listed earlier. Through this process of demonstrating to Timothy that he was called to serve God in ministry, Paul was able to increase Timothy's level of psychological empowerment. 
You know, in my ministry, uh, uh, going on over 20 years, there were times that there were people in my life that I, I was, I, I don't know if I can do this or, or what should we do and things. There were people that came alongside and provided those words of, of, uh, of encouragement and saying, you got this, you know, we, we can do this. You, you're not on your own. We, we got this together. Let's, let's move forward. Don't, don't lose sight that God had put you and called you to ministry. Don't lose sight of that just because of the, you're so focused so much on your surroundings and what's taking place. Remember that God had called you. And those are the kind of words that Timothy must have received throughout his life under the tutelage of the apostle Paul. And then the final component of, of the apostle Paul's mentorship to Timothy involved in consistently communicating his admiration, his respect, his gratitude for Timothy as a fellow worker of the kingdom of God. So again, the potential, you got the challenges, you got the empowerment, and you got the words of encouragement throughout the time that from where they are to where they need to be. So I want to share with you that sometimes there are challenges that come along the way that it also involves the mentor to be alongside of, the, of their student. And the next clip I want to share with you is a Spider-Man and Spidey are going through a situation and you're going to see how Spider-Man is able to guide Spidey through. And I love the, 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 the moment, I know it's a, a, a short clip, but think about what, where they were, what they were doing, and the moment that at the, at the end of this video, and I'll come, for those of you who are watching online, we'll be right back. So here it is, there's a challenge, and at one point the mentor of Spider-Man was going alongside of Spidey, his student, and they did it together. And in the midst of that, the challenge here, uh, Spider-Man is giving him uh, instructions of what to do. What was happening, he says, hey, what are you doing? At one point, Spider-Man says, what are you doing? And, and he says, uh, I'm running, I run better than what I swing. And, and so here's the part. Spider-Man knew what the young Spidey needed to do. He saw the potential. He saw what uh, uh, Spidey needed to do. And to bring him up to that level, he tried to instruct him, give him instructions to get them where he was. And what happened towards the end, uh, here they are swinging together simultaneously and just uh, going by that he says, man, this is pretty cool. And, and what does uh, Spider-Man say? He says, man, we're, we're a little team. And I love what he says, me as a teacher who could still do it, you as a student who can do it, just not as good. I'm proud of us. And I love that last line. I'm proud of us. You see, the Apostle Paul recognized that Timothy was the right person to join him in ministry. And, and Paul expected uh, Timothy to learn not only from his teaching, but also the way that he lived life. When he felt comfortable enough with his student, he would occasionally send them as a substitute ambassador to churches that Paul had founded and was eager to maintain. In his writings to these churches to alert them of Timothy's coming, Paul would publicly express his confidence in the young man's uh, that he was mentoring. For example, I don't have time to read the scriptures, but if you're taking notes, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17. Philippians 2, verses 19 to 23. 1 Thessalonians 3, uh, verses 2 to 7. And you're going to read what I'm talking about here. But as Timothy developed his ministerial competence under uh, the Apostle Paul's guidance and instruction, he became increasingly empowered to spread the gospel message. Eventually, Paul let Timothy become independent and head, and head a ministry of his own. Now, although Paul trusted uh, uh, Timothy uh, with his important missions, he also had a paternal uh, care and compassion for him. And throughout the letters of Timothy, you'll actually see him say, my son, even though it wasn't his blood son, but when you become a mentor and, uh, and, uh, and you have a student, you have that relationship together, whether when they're going the ups and the downs, is growing together. And they, he really felt that the relationship was so close that he will call him my son. Now, as the Apostle Paul sensed that he was approaching his death, Paul sent Timothy a letter summing up what he thought it was most important for his protege to remember. So I want you to, uh, oh, I'm going to open up the scriptures to 2 Timothy. This is the second letter. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1 
And I'm going to be uh, skipping through some verses here, so uh, I'll follow along. This is uh, verses 5 through 9 of 2 Timothy, first chapter. Again, keep in mind, the Apostle Paul, he's writing to his protege, uh, T- uh, Timothy, and these are his words of encouragement. It says, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. This is why I remind you to fan into flames a spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about the Lord, and don't be ashamed of me either, even though I'm in prison for him. With the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. And then I'm going to, uh, verse 9 says, For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserve it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. On verse, uh, drop down to verse four, uh, 13 and 14, it says, Hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching you learn from me, a pattern shaped by the faith and love that you have uh, in Christ Jesus. Now, through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, carefully guard the precious truth that has been entrusted to you. And he continued on with that letter. In chapter 2, several uh, selected verses, verse 2 says, You have heard me teach uh, things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. I love that part where uh, the Apostle Paul understands the mentoring responsibility, but also the responsibility falls on the student and that the instruction that the student is, is receiving is not only to keep it for themselves, but to pass it on. Because what happens when the individual is no longer living, does the word just finish? I'm so grateful that throughout the years, ever since Christ was in this earth, that uh, uh, people took the word and continues, and it continues to today, and then it will continue on, certainly after I am no longer here. On verse 15, uh, verse 15 of that passage says, work hard so you, do not, so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. He continued on with verse 22. It says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Again, I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that are only start fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. Be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. You see, Paul left Timothy a great legacy. But the relationship was not all the one way because the young man was clearly a comfort to his uh, aging and, and bachelor mentor. Paul wrote his letter to Timothy while in prison, and he sensed that his time was coming to an end. So to finish out this part of the, the sermon here today in 2 Corinthians, excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, here's Paul writing his letter to Timothy, and he says this, as for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful, and now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Now, although he was clearly ready to go, Paul longed to have his dear son with him because on verse 9 he says, Timothy, please come as soon as you can. So in the midst of mentoring, ladies and gentlemen, what happens when your mentor dies? 
It happened to me many times, or uh, several times, not many, but several times throughout my life. And just recently with the Reverend uh, Carlotta Madison, she was my mentor, she, I received word that she passed away. And this is an individual that was a great support to me uh, in prayer uh, and, and, and saying, hey, you got this. And, and especially, as you already know, the transition from Kanshahakin to New Hanover, uh, he says, no, you got this. The Lord's been with you. I mean, just the words of encouragement. We used to go over to the Cracker Barrel in, uh, in Plymouth meeting and have breakfast together. And in fact, uh, I think what hit me the most also is that uh, that we already had scheduled a breakfast there to just talk and, and catch up because uh, as we do on a regular basis and she called me up and she says look there's something's happening in ministry that I got to take care of I said absolutely I understand ministry go and take care of it we'll reschedule and unfortunately that reschedule never happened because I received the, the message that she had passed away but here's the part as being a mentor uh, a few things can happen either we stop what we're doing just because our mentor is no longer with us we go and select another mentor to take us to where we need to be, or we can also become a mentor ourselves to other people. And I'm sure that Carlotta, uh, the Reverend Carlotta would not want me to just stop just because she's no longer here. My responsibility, and I really feel that I wanna make sure that I become a mentor to others and, I, and I've prayed that I have been, but I, that intentional, if those are people who want to be in pastoral ministry, that I can come alongside of them, and I'll remember, as I'm teaching them, I remember her teachings and, and words of encouragement, and there were times that she was there with me, same, similar as Spider-Man and little Spidey, the, uh, uh, and giving instructions, uh, be careful here, and, and this or that is, I'll remember those moments. So I, sat, I went down to the prayer room, prayer, uh, room in our, uh, below our chapel, and I just prayed for her family. I prayed for her church. I prayed for our DS. I prayed for me because I know I was hurting. And, but in the midst of that, I just felt like, Lord, but I just want to say thank you for the years that I, I got to know her. The times of laughter, the times that were of struggle, and the times of words of encouragement that she gave me. God, I want to say thank you that you provided her in my life. And she's only one of several mentors that I have, but when you have that relationship with somebody, almost what Timothy and, and the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul thought of, of Timothy as a son, man, I thought of her as a mother, a spiritual mother that really loved me, cared for me, and I know that several of you have gone through mentors, or uh, whether officially or unofficially. So here's my, I'm going to uh, put a little homework out to you, because I want to end here. I'm going to ask you the musicians. They're probably already ready to go, <laughs> musicians and singers, but think about who have been your mentors? And, 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 and the second part of the, of the question is, have you given, have you said thank you to them? I know Carlotta, uh, uh, Carlotta knew that I was so thankful. I will send her a few messages, whether emails or text messages, or saying it in person how much I appreciate her. But have you acknowledged and said thank you to those who have come alongside of you and helped you to be where you are today? So if you haven't, I encourage you this week, pray about it, let the Lord lead you and, and guide you. So, okay, this person, this person, give them a phone call and say, hey, you probably don't know about this, but you touched my life in a way that it was it, it very meaningful for me, and this is how you did it. And let them know. I think it will definitely be an encouragement to them. But I pray that just because our mentors are no longer around, uh, that you stop what you're doing. Timothy certainly didn't. I certainly won't but I pray that you continue to seek God and say, God, where are the Timothys in this life? Is it a home, our work, our school, our community? Let me be the Apostle Paul to them. So let me, let me end with prayer. God, give us the wisdom and confidence to become a mentor. The commitment and insight to find our Timothys in our lives. May we impact their lives. May they impact others. May they impact our lives. Even when we are no longer living here on earth, of what we have showed them or taught them, it continues to go on as they give you honor and glory. Let our protégés become mentors to others. That your word will continue to be passed on from generation to generation. 
We thank you that thus far, over to over 2,000 years after Jesus was here on the earth and doing his ministry, that others continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we continue to build the kingdom here, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as always, ladies and gentlemen, we know that our lay pastors and Stephen ministers will be up in the front of our uh, altar here to pray with you and for you. So if you need prayer, if you know somebody else that needs prayer and represent them, please come forward. They want to pray with you and for you. Next, year, next week's uh, uh, movie is about the, the, based on the true story of, of Sully, uh, the, the, the pilot that, regarding the Hudson River. And also, uh, I'm so excited for the tech booth and the uh, Eagle Scout project that's being done. It should be completed by August, the end of August. And we can continue to improve on what we do uh, uh, together as a church, but also coming together with sound, lighting, uh, uh, cameras, everything else that we need to happen to continue to share the love of Christ with others that are outside of these walls. May God continue to lead you. May he continue to guide you and to look out in ways that you can become a mentor to somebody. But also remember, thank your mentor. May God bless all of you until we see each other again. God's people will all say amen. I'm going to ask you to please stand for the closing song.